Exploration and adventure has always been Skyrim's main focus, but unfortunately, combat wasn't. Because if pausing the game to devour 50 cabbages in the middle of battle is a viable strategy, then I think it's safe to say that there's quite a lot of room for improvement. The lack of intrigue and real difficulty leads to ludonarrative dissonance. The game's telling me I'm the mighty dragonborn, but it's hard to feel mighty when combat just boils down to spamming left click, pausing the game to chug potions, and save scumming. Furthermore, if you've sunk hundreds of hours into Skyrim like me, you'll know that the main appeal of exploration and adventure starts to dwane a bit. However, today I offer you an accord. Let's solve this conundrum so that returning to areas you've already explored and quested through will still be enjoyable. As you may already know, Elden Ring, Miyazaki's new masochistic masterpiece was released recently, and for the past few months, it's utterly consumed my life. Of course, it'd be silly to assume we can completely recreate Elden Ring's combat in Skyrim. There are two completely different games with very different mechanics. But what we can do is use Elden Ring as a reference point to improve Skyrim's gameplay loop. After months of playtesting and tinkering, I have managed to concoct a setup I think you'll enjoy. It's stable, not script heavy, and very balanced. I'd also like to mention that I have designed this video with a written guide to go with it as instructions and other details are easier to follow when presented in written form. In the guide, I'll also cover some extra mods that you might be interested in. Most mods in this setup are compatible with Anniversary Edition, but there will be a few that are not. Unfortunately, some modders are still suffering, porting Special Edition mods to Anniversary Edition. Because, I mean how could we ever ignore the drastic performance benefits AE brings? I built this setup with SE in mind, but if you are an AE user, I'll try to provide alternatives to incompatible mods in my written guide. This video is mainly meant to showcase my setup, explain my philosophy, and cover what each mod in my setup does. So if you have any questions regarding installation, requirements, MCM settings, or AE compatibility, please consult my written guide. Alright, without further ado, let's begin. Skyrim. In order to fully overhaul combat, we're going to need MCO, ADXP, a combat animation framework that bypasses the animation wall, allowing for weapon movesets that have commitment like in Elden Ring. These movesets are essential for implementing the weapon identity and weapon variation that Souls games are known for. For those who aren't familiar, ADXP is the successor to the renowned SkySA framework and fixes many of its issues while providing new features. By default, ADXP comes with Mike Nike's Elder Souls collection already built in, so you won't have to worry about installing other movesets. Both the framework and animations are already provided. Human enemies will also be overhauled to use these movesets, so with ADXP, you can expect to see way more variety when fighting said enemies. However, for those who are interested in replacing certain weapon movesets with other ones made by other animators, please refer to the written guide. Also, make sure to install Disable Recoil, because now that we've got moveset combos, we'll need this to be able to chain combos when attacks are blocked. However, with such a revolutionary animation framework implemented into our game, we're going to need to overhaul enemy AI to fully take advantage of it. Enemies weren't designed to have movesets in vanilla, so if you play with ADXP alone, humanoid enemies will just attack with one animation at a time. But in order to make enemies perform MCO moveset combos, I'm going to recommend an early access mod, Skyrim Combo Attack Revolution. With Scar, NPCs no longer combo sporadically, leaving themselves open for no reason. They're now much more intelligent, taking distance between them and the player into account. So unlike in vanilla, they're not going to continue to combo if the player isn't in range. An enemy's level will also dictate how long their combo chains will be, so you can expect higher leveled enemies to be much more of a threat from a mechanical standpoint. Currently Scar is in beta testing and is still being polished. However, you can grab an early access copy of it by supporting Monage on Patreon before it's made public a month from now. For this setup, I've also decided to use Enhanced Enemy AI a lightweight, script-free mod that improves enemy combat styles to make them even more intelligent. Mages will use more spells, especially defensive ones, and warriors will bash and power attack more frequently. Mages are difficult to deal with when they keep casting while moving away though, especially now considering that we have attack commitment in our setup. So to help balance enemy mages, grab enemy mage lock. With this, enemy mages stand still when casting. Now that we've got our animations and AI set up, let's talk about hitboxes and collision mapping. 
Now, I'm going to present you with two options here. Option 1, Speed and Reach Fixes plus Elder Soul's Sweep Attacks. Speed and Reach Fixes adjusts the lengths of weapon hitboxes to match their models more closely. This won't be the most accurate as we're still relying on cone hitboxes, but it definitely helps to fix the ridiculous hitboxes the game currently has. And additionally, we can use Elder Soul's Sweep Attacks to allow us to hit multiple enemies at once with one swing. Option 2, Precision, an early access mod. Precision is a mod still in the works. It aims to add actual tracing to melee weapons and creature attacks, thus giving the game extremely precise collision mapping. We're not relying on cones here, so you're able to get interesting interactions when it comes to animations and hitboxes, which is another important nuance from Souls titles. Also, you won't need Elder Soul sweep attacks if you use Precision, as hitting multiple enemies at once will be enabled by default in its MCN. Although Precision is still being worked on, you can get early access to it by supporting Ursh on Patreon. However, being able to hit multiple enemies with a single attack, whether from Elder Soul sweep attacks or precision, can get a little frustrating when fighting alongside a follower. But thankfully, we are able to solve this problem by installing no follower attack collision. Now, switching over to gameplay mods, we need true directional movement for improved movement, lock-on, HUD elements, and more. TDM also comes with a mod configuration menu, so you're able to tweak it to your heart's content. I won't spend much time covering TDM, as it does quite a lot, but I will mention that it will completely overhaul how you play the game in third person, and is crucial to making this setup play like Elden Ring. I decided to implement backstabs into the game by using ZX Slice, Backstab, and Parry. However, I did disable parrying in its INI so we only get backstabs. I did this because parrying in its current state didn't feel good in my setup. Backstabs, however, work very well in this setup, as they reward good positioning. But to make backstabbing more viable, let's install mortal enemies, so enemies commit more to attacks. This helps to make enemies not rotate while they're attacking, giving you tiny windows to perform backstabs just like in Elden Ring. For our camera mod, we'll be using SmoothCam a highly customizable camera mod with many presets available. If you wish to use the preset I'm currently using to record this video, you can find a link to it in my written guide. Now grab better third person selection. This will help out tremendously for picking up and interacting with the objects in third person, as we'll now be spending most of our time in third person. Lastly, for gameplay mods, here's Skyrim Souls. This mod allows for unpaused menus in game and is highly configurable. This isn't going to be for everyone, but I personally feel that it's helped me stay more immersed in the game. Now over to Stamina Consumption Mods. We need Normal Attack Stamina Consumption to make Light Attacks consume Stamina and have Stamina Requirement. In addition to this, Regen Adjuster, so that we're able to increase Stamina Regen, and Elden Sprint, so you don't use Stamina outside of combat. This combination alters the game so that Stamina Management isn't too tedious but it will still help us set up a strong foundation for challenging gameplay. We also don't have to worry about stamina consumption outside of combat, like in Elden Ring, because honestly, I'd rather not constantly run out of stamina when exploring. However, there is one glaring issue with stamina consumption mods when you implement them into Skyrim. Frost magic damages stamina. Fighting enemies that use frost magic while having stamina consumption mods is an easy way to go crazy. To solve this, install frost stamina damage nullifier to remove stamina damage from frost magic. Thankfully, frost magic won't be nerfed too much, as the slow debuff it applies still makes it a force to be reckoned with. Alright, getting into dodge mods, here are two options. Option 1, TK dodge plus TK dodge RE. This combination allows us to get dodges with customizable stamina consumption and invincibility frames. Additionally, TK Dodge supports first-person dodging. Option 2, DMCO, an early access mod. I personally have a preference for DMCO, simply because of its animations. But just like with TK Dodge RE, it's script-free, has customizable stamina consumption and invincibility frames. However, DMCO does not support first-person dodging. This isn't a deal breaker for me personally though, but if you do want these features, then I suggest you use TK Dodge instead. One extra thing to mention though is that DMCO supports dodging in 8 directions, while TK Dodge only supports 4. If you're interested in DMCO, you can get early access to it by supporting DSTAR on Patreon. Alright, now to overhaul blocking. 
In vanilla Skyrim, blocking reduces the amount of health damage you take. However, to fit our setup more appropriately, let's use Shield of Stamina. With SOS, blocking attacks will damage your stamina instead of health. However, when you run out of stamina while blocking, you'll then take health damage. This works very well with Skyrim's design, because block perks still retain value as they'll reduce both the stamina and health damage you take. Now let's grab Elden Counter. This mod replicates the guard counter mechanic from Elden Ring. When you're hit by an enemy while blocking, performing a power attack right after will trigger a guard counter. The combination of SOS and Elden Counter sets up a very strong foundation for blocking, and it just works. However, we're not done with blocking yet. We now need Vanguard. Vanguard overhauls bashing by implementing brand new animations both for the player and NPCs. Power bashing will now cause the player to charge forward a bit and is a great way to close the distance between you and the enemy, so it's perfect for close-up builds. Additionally, it always annoyed me how NPCs bash instantly in vanilla, but with Vanguard, bash attacks will now be telegraphed. Finally, grab impactful blocking to add reactions to actors when they block attacks. It's a small detail, but I noticed this while playing Elden Ring. Whenever you block an attack, there's a tiny window where you're stuck in place. It's easy to miss, but this feature really adds another layer to blocking and gives it more depth. Next up, Stagger Mods. You've got two options here. Option 1, Stagger on Hit. Stagger on Hit is pretty simple. Actors stagger when they get hit, with some special cases with blocking and attacking of course. Option 2, Poise, an early access mod. Poise is a little more complicated. It's also currently a work in progress mod just like Precision. However, in its current state, I must say it works extremely well in this setup. With poise, the player and NPCs will have a poise value. This value is determined by how heavy the apparel actors have equipped is. This is also roughly how poise works in Elden Ring. Having more poise makes you more resistant to being staggered and knocked down by enemies. Heavier weapons, like warhammers, will also deal significantly more poise damage than light weapons such as daggers. Additionally, poise comes with custom stagger and knockdown animations, which really help us replicate the poise system in Elden Ring. If you want early access to poise, make sure to support Loki on Patreon. Once you've selected your stagger mod, be sure to also install stagger direction fix to make staggers more consistent. Ask yourself this question, do you want to overhaul how saving works? For me personally, the answer to this question is a resounding yes. I am stubborn, so if the game gives me any chance to save scum, I'll fucking do it. However, I did notice that save scumming was hindering my enjoyment of the game. I really needed to restrict myself to prevent my fights devolving into spamming quicksave every 5 seconds. If you're like me, a chronic quicksaving addict, I highly recommend you try out a combination of two mods. Think of it like rehab. Here's combat autosave, and no saving in combat. It's simple, really. The game autosaves when entering combat, and you can't save during combat. Moving on to kill moves. Firstly, let's install Violins so we're able to tweak kill moves. Now, using Violins, it's up to you how you want to set kill moves up. I personally use a preset where kill moves don't change the camera angle and so they appear to be seamless. But hey, you could fully disable kill moves or not touch them at all. It's entirely up to you. However, we do want to install both kill move paralysis prevention and post hit kill move and executions to polish our setup. Let's now take a look at potions. I personally use Pot Lock Limiter to limit the amount of potions and lockpicks my character is able to carry. Prior to installing Pot Lock Limiter, I used to carry around dozens of potions and lockpicks, and as a result, using them didn't feel very special. Only once I started limiting these resources did I actually start to give a fuck. With Pot Lock Limiter, every potion and every lockpick matters, and now you're actually incentivized to level up alchemy and lockpicking in order to make potions more potent, and lockpicks last longer. I've also balanced potions so you can't chug multiple of them at once, using Zupa. Also just like in Elden Ring, upon drinking a potion, your character will enter an animation, which has to fully play out before you can do anything else. Finally, for potion mods, I recommend grabbing Smart Optimal Solves so you can bind a hotkey for consuming potions. This solves the issue of having to favorite multiple potions of differing quality. Alright, we've reached a point where our setup has a strong foundation, but to really put some icing on the cake, we'll need more balancing and some add-ons. Install no level up healing if you don't want to be able to cheese fights by leveling up in the middle of them. For projectiles, well, in vanilla Skyrim, they're simply too fast. You're just not going to be able to avoid them consistently. 
To make matters worse, there are even instant cast spells that are impossible to avoid. So let's install Projectiles MCO to slow projectiles down and fix bad game design. Furthermore, I've added resistances and weaknesses to my setup. Just like in Elden Ring, there are different damage types, and enemies will have different resistances to them. I enjoy this mod because it keeps things simple. It splits damage into six different types. For melee weapons, we have slash, piercing, and bludgeoning. For magic, fire, frost, and shock. Enemies will now be 50% more resistant and 50% more weak to certain damage types. Here's some quick examples. Chorus will now be resistant to slash damage, so from swords, axes, and greatswords. However, they will now take more damage from bludgeoning weapons, so from maces and warhammers. Dwarven centurions will be resistant to shock damage, but now take more damage from both fire and frost magic. For me personally, this mod makes combat much more enjoyable, and there's a lot of fun to be had when you have to figure out what enemies are resistant and weak to. Now let's balance armor. In vanilla Skyrim, the armor rating system is… fucking broken. Having an armor rating between 0 to 300 is pretty pointless. But the moment you have an armor rating of 300 to 600, every point suddenly becomes very valuable. However, any points above 667 will be rendered useless and capped off. To make matters even worse, there is actually a hidden armor rating that most people don't even know about. Every time you equip a piece of armor, you gain an additional 25 points of armor rating. However, this system starts to fall apart completely when you have armor mods that have more than the standard amount of pieces. To fix this, install Armor Rating Redux. With the Hyperbolic preset, which I personally recommend, every point of armor counts. Kind of like in Morrowind, so early armor will protect you a lot more while good armor, past the cap, will still be useful. It will also be much more difficult to reach insanely high protection values, and so this is a great way of balancing armor in my opinion. The future is bright, and there are exciting projects still in development like Ashes of War from Loki that would be a great addition to this setup later down the road. Everyone's ideal setup is different. There will be aspects of my setup you might want or not want, and that's fine. Trying out different combinations and tinkering with setups takes time but it really makes you appreciate game design and is very rewarding in the long run. I'd also appreciate any feedback you may have, so please comment down below your thoughts or questions. I hope you enjoyed looking at how I set up my setup. Bear in mind, I shall be updating my written guide as mods get updated or released, so if you decide to replicate this setup, be sure to check out my guide every now and then to stay updated. If you're interested in more setups and guides, be sure to subscribe like the video, and consider supporting the channel on Patreon. These lovely humans make it possible for me to keep creating content while studying at uni. Take care lads and lasses, and see you next time.